Trump has maintained for two weeks that he can't actually do anything by executive order. And then he actually didn't do much by this executive order. The executive order doesn't actually do anything. So why did he do it? And the answer is he didn't like the headline. And President Trump has a bad habit of he gets himself into hot water and then all of the people around him stand up and defend what he's done. Right? They defend at least the policy. They say this is legally defensible. And then President Trump doesn't like the blowback. And then he undercuts his own side by going and saying, you know what, I'm going to sign an executive order and fix all of this. And well, you can't sign this. Exec this executive order doesn't do anything. Right? It is ineffective. But it does hand a headline to the left which is Trump folded, Trump caved. So Stephen Colbert last night on his ex show, he said that President Trump folded by issuing this executive order. Make no mistake, Trump folded. He folded like an origami Trump casino. <laughs> this is the first time I have seen President Trump fold, right? This, he's never done this before. He folded for the first time. So how did we get here? Okay, and then he talks about, we got here through public pressure. We got here because you spoke out, right? Trump folded like a house of cheap cards, right? That's what he did. Here's the problem. The same media that is saying that he folded, so th that should mean problem over, right? I mean, if he folded, then the problem is over. Except for that was never the agenda. The actual agenda of the left is full release of anyone coming across the border. There's a feeling on the left that ICE itself is inappropriate, that there is something deeply wrong with even arresting people at the border. So, Samantha B, the least funny person in America, she won that title a couple of weeks ago outright, right? She'd been in a running gun battle with Trevor Noah and Amy Schumer and Lena Dunham. But she actually took the cake after her rant against Ivanka Trump. She, she actually took the gold medal. She ran away like, like secretariat. It was pretty amazing. Well, now she comes forward and she says, listen, Trump retreats on separating families. And then he signs an order to detain them together. But for Samantha B, this is not enough. Why? Because she wants them all released into general society. That's the whole point. Yay! No more baby internment camps, just regular internment camps. <laughs> cool, that's what we call a win in 2018. To be clear, I am happy that at least these kids are theoretically going to stay with their parents, but mommy and me jails are not a solution. They're not new, and they're also not legal. Man, is she unfunny. My goodness. I mean, be, being in her audience must be, be like being in a comedy internment camp. My goodness, that's just, she, she is the worst. Wow. But the point that she's making is the point that Democrats were always going to make. And I have been saying this for weeks, for weeks, for weeks, for weeks. Not to say I told you so, but I, period, told, period, you, period, so. I told you so. I, I told you that as soon as Trump said he's going to hold the families together, Democrats were immediately going to claim that something egregious had gone on. Something egregious was now going on. We we're back to the policy that Obama embraced, but that was bad enough. All we want is full release. So yeah, Bernie Sanders saying that too. Here's Bernie Sanders saying that President Trump's executive order, it did not go far enough. It did not include pudding funding for me and my friends. And also, I will not share my pudding with actual illegal immigrants, but I will rant about it until I get my pudding from one of my aides. So please talk Anderson Cooper to Bernie Sanders and then later Bernie Sanders will eat his pudding. The idea of tearing little children from the arms of their parents, putting them into detention cages, uh, and then making a big deal about an executive order, which may do absolutely nothing. It was a crisis that he created and attempted to address today, but he didn't go anywhere near far enough. Okay, the only way the Democrats are going to feel that President Trump went far enough is if he does a, an en masse release. Right, is that he, he gets an en masse release of all of these people. And that, of course, is the whole point here. Right? That's what the media is pushing for, as well as what the media are pushing for. Here was Time Magazine's new cover. Time Magazine has a brand new cover out. And what exactly is their cover? Well, it's this obnoxious thing. So it's a, it's a cover of a crying child, uh, supposedly being separated from the parents, staring up at President Trump, who is grinning down at the kid. Right? Because, and then it says, Welcome to America, Time Magazine. Right. I don't remember this sort of cover with Barack Obama and his giant camps full of children who are wrapped in aluminum foil. But I am seeing this cover. The whole point here is that no matter what Trump does, he loses, according to the media. So if that's the case, why not just enforce the law and then put it back on Congress? This has become very obvious. The Democrats never cared about the policy of separation. They never cared about it. This was all a ruse. The Democrats were fully concerned only and explicitly with destroying Donald Trump. How do we know this? Number one, Chuck Schumer refused the opportunity to put a legislative fix on this boo-boo. Ted Cruz wanted a legislative fix. Chuck Schumer said, no, we're going to put Trump's feet to the fire instead. You cannot simultaneously argue that the policy is Nazi-esque and then turn down the opportunity to change the policy. That's not how this works. How else do we know? Well, now Trump has supposedly changed the policy. Now, as I explained, I don't think the policy actually changed, legally speaking, but supposedly Trump changed the policy. And how did Democrats respond? Did they respond by saying, 
Well, good for President Trump. It's about time that we change this. Or, you know, we pressured Trump into this. Good for us. We finally did it. We've won a big victory. Yay! That is not how they responded. How did they respond? Well, they responded by saying, we need more. Release everyone. Here's Kamala Harris's tweet. So Kamala Harris, my awful, awful senator from the state of California, she tweeted out, this executive order doesn't fix the crisis. Indefinitely detaining children with their families in camps is inhumane and will not make us safe. So again, if you separate the kids from the families, that's inhumane. But if you keep the kids with the parents, that's also inhumane. So the only solution left by process of elimination is to release everyone which of course is the entire goal. And by the way, justifies everything Trump has been saying about Democrats don't like borders, that Democrats just want illegal immigrants released into the general population, that that actually is their priority. If that's not their priority, they need to propose a policy solution that allows us to arrest illegal immigrants who come in here with kids. Otherwise, they're not providing us a policy solution. They just want people released generally. And then Eric Swalwell, who's another congressperson, another Democrat congressperson, he comes forward, he says, this Trump executive order is gonna lead to internment camps, Democrat from California. This could lead to family internment camps, uh, Wolf, and, and that is what we do not want to see. And, and the way to avoid that is to still follow that Flores decision, which is a humane decision that does not want people in camps like this indefinitely. Okay, this is my favorite part. Okay, so my favorite part of this is that that was the policy. Okay, the new Trump policy, keeping these kids together with their parents, that was the Trump policy, the stated Trump policy, up in the, the Obama policy, the government policy, up till 2015, 2016. Okay, Obama implemented that policy. So Luis Gutierrez, who is a, a radical leftist, right, from Illinois, uh, he was asked about this. Right? He said, well, hold on, a, hold up a second. You know, you're ripping on Trump now saying that he's gonna keep the families together, but that's what Obama did. Why didn't you complain about Obama on any of this? Here's Luis Gutierrez answering that question. We did challenge Obama, but you know what? Obama I, yeah. had a heart, he had a soul, he had a heart, he had a center. He had convictions, and we could speak to those. Okay, so in other words, we challenged him, but really we massaged his ass. Really, well, our challenge was really mostly us getting out the massage oils and just really going to work on President Obama. That's, that's basically how we challenged him, because he had a heart. He had a soul. I looked into his eyes, and it was romantic. We had that long, lingering, awkward moment before we kissed. I mean, like, really. That was the way that you challenged Barack Obama, whose policy was exactly the same as the current reinstated policy of Donald Trump. The only difference between Trump's policy and Obama's policy is that Trump is doing it more often. That is literally the only difference. The only difference is that Trump is actually attempting to strictly enforce border crossings. He's using criminal court instead of civil convictions in order to enforce the border. And Obama did that, but not as much. That's the only difference. And yet we are told that Obama had a heart. He had a soul. How do we know he had a heart and he had a soul? Because he had a D by his name. That's the real answer. We had a D by his name, and that means that he had a heart and he had a soul. By the way, the Democrats' proposed legislation on border separation would let nearly all parents who commit federal crimes get off scot-free. Right? Gabriel Mallor has an entire column on this where he went through the Senate Democrat co-sponsored bill written carelessly. It doesn't distinguish between migrant children at the border and U.S. citizen children already within the United States. The bill further does not distinguish between federal officers handling the border crisis and federal law enforcement pursuing the ordinary course of their duties. The bill provides that an agent or officer of a designated agency shall be prohibited from removing a child from his or her parent or legal guardian at or near the port of entry or within 100 miles of the border of the United States. Okay, well, there, this is a serious problem because if you can't remove the kids from the parents, then you can't arrest the parents, according to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. So their bill actually just releases all illegal immigrants who come across the border with kids. But of course, that's their entire policy. Now, here's the hilarious part. Jay Johnson, who you will recall was the Secretary of Homeland Security under Barack Obama, the execrable DHS Secretary under Barack Obama from 2013 to 2017, who presided over this Obama-era policy. You know, the Obama-era policy of keeping kids together with parents in detention centers. He has an entire piece in the Washington Post virtue signaling. So he did the exact same thing Trump is now saying that he's going to do. And he has a long piece in the Washington Post talking about what a good dude he is, just like Luis Gutierrez says. He has a soul. He has a heart. And it's really nice calves. Anyway, here's what he says. My wife and I spent Mother's Day in 2014 at a U.S. Border Patrol Center in McAllen, Texas. The facility had been built for single adults, but it looked like a crude daycare center flooded with children. In the midst of that flood, my eyes were drawn to one little girl sitting alone at a desk and being processed by a Border Patrol agent. I was struck by her long black hair, which was beautiful despite the hot and dirty journey from Central America she had just completed. I asked her, why did you come here? She replied, I'm looking for my mother in the United States. She began to try, cry. The translator began to cry. I began to cry. Yeah, really. 
This is what he's writing, okay? This is the guy who was responsible for actual families being held in detention centers in 2014, 2015, and who said openly that this was a deterrent policy designed to keep little girls with beautiful black hair from journeying from Central America. He says, as I witnessed the Trump administration's current practice of separating children from their parents at the border with Mexico, the image of that little girl and hundreds of other migrant women and children is fixed in my mind. Not the not the images of those kids who you are keeping in detention centers, you know, Jay Johnson. The images, of course, that have to do with Trump. Now, here's the whole point here. Democrats don't actually have to act sympathetic. All they have to do is is act as though they are sympathetic. They don't actually have to pursue policies that are sympathetic to American citizens. They don't have to pursue good legal policies. All they have to do is talk about how much they cry and we're all supposed to pretend that that means that they have the best of intentions. He says, I hesitate to criticize my successors in office who are burdened with the responsibility of keeping the U.S. homeland and its borders secure. I hesitate to cast doubt on the hard work of those who once worked for me in the DHS. Yeah, he hesitates in the pages of the Washington Post. But when it comes to certain offensive and wrong-headed government policies, those of us with a public voice and who understand the issue cannot stay silent. So what exactly is the problem with the policy, according to Jay Johnson? He says he doesn't like the zero tolerance deterrence policy. And in fact, he doesn't like that everybody who's coming across the border illegally is arrested. Now, he doesn't have anything to say about the actual separation policy because he engaged in it. And he doesn't actually have anything to say about keeping families together because he engaged in it. Instead, he just says that we should get rid of the zero tolerance policy, which essentially means that we should release all of these people into the center of the United States. He says, the answer to the underlying problem is twofold. First, send more aid to Central America. In 2016, Congress started down this road by appropriating 750 million bucks in assistance for Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. In subsequent years, that level of support has fallen off, so we're supposed to pay off these countries. Second, encourage the neighboring countries in the region, Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Belize, to develop their own systems for accepting Central American refugees and asylum seekers. Okay, this is the hilarious part. So his two solutions don't involve separation, or keeping kids together with their parents. The only solutions he's actually suggesting, Jay Johnson, the former DHS secretary under kind, caring, generous Barack Obama, is cut a check to Honduras and try to ask the Mexicans to take care of the problem. Those are really his only two solutions. That's it. Nothing about parental separation. Nothing about keeping kids together with their parents. All of which suggests this is just politically driven crap.